Hey, and welcome back. It's Anthony with How to Get Into Drama School. We've got an awesome episode for you today about college audition prep. It is a master's student who's graduated from a great program at UCSD. Her name is Fiki. She's a friend of mine. She has some amazing stories to share, and it's a unique situation because she actually didn't have an acting background before getting into her master's. So if you can wrap your head around that, I think that's a good place to start. So without further ado, let's get into how Fiki got into drama school. Enjoy. Hey, we are here with Fiki. What's going on, Fiki? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm awesome. Sounds like you got some tea or something you're enjoying over there. Oh, yeah. It's um, actually ginger. It's like a ginger concoction. So it's ginger water, apple cider vinegar, and honey. Oh, Man, we should be in the same room right now. Oh, God. Um, well, very cool. Let's talk about how you got into drama school, shall we? Yes, we shall. Um, I want to ask you to really just at least start by giving us like a brief, let's say one minute version of, of like what your journey was leading up to applications. Like I know you went to your, you got your master's from UCSD, but like Where'd you get your bachelor's even before that? Like, how did you get into acting? Like, give us the like really snapshot version of how you even got up to the point where you wanted to audition. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to really try to give you the really quick version of that. <laughs> okay. Um, one minute. Here we go. So I, I went to, I graduated from University of Pittsburgh with my um, bachelor's in marketing. And um, I want to say like my sophomore year, um, a girl in my Spanish class, she was like, you should do the vagina monologues. You would be great. And I was like, what? The vagina <laughs> monologues? I was like, I'm not going to do the vagina monologues. Anyway, she slipped the script into my backpack and the rest has been history. I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And so I've always known that I wanted to um, do acting, but I'm first generation Nigerian American. And like for any like kids of immigrant parents, they usually come to this country not for you to become for not for their kid to become like an artist, but for them to be like a lawyer, a doctor, like uh, and maybe like a successful business person. So like very like you know very strict guidelines, and so um, for a while I fought that feeling, and once I did the vagina monologue, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. So. I pretty much like moved to New York the night of my graduation and not knowing anything about the business, not knowing anything about what an agent is, a manager, any of those different things. And I just moved to New York and I got a job, like the side job um, rather quickly. <laughs> and so like one day I like moved all of my stuff from Pittsburgh into my parents' house in the Poconos. And I was like living in New York and I was figuring it out. And I, kind of got like, I guess you would call it beginner's luck um, rather early on, a lot of beginner's luck and just like kind of working and all of these things were kind of falling into my lap. And and then there became a point that I was like, well, I'm kind of hitting uh, hitting a wall, like what's the next step? So I had auditioned like my first TV audition. I, um, I didn't get the part and it was for the show power. And um, I was like looking up on IMDb Pro, I was like, who got the part? And then I saw this guy Ruffin, who I went to University of Pittsburgh with, which we, who we, we weren't really good friends um, at the time, but I saw that he was on the show. And so I messaged him and I was like, hey, are you in New York? Can we like get coffee or something? And we met at Panera. Um, uh, and he, and I was just like, you know, how did you, how did that happen? And, you know, he had graduated from Rutgers and he was just saying like, pretty much it was all about like connections and his training. He was like, but I commend you people that are, are like out here, just pounding the pavement, like no training, no nothing. And I was like, well, maybe this training might be something to look into. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, his girlfriend at the time, now his wife, um, she like she was so she's pretty much has the career that I I would love um Cara Patterson she was you know she's been on she was on Broadway at the time I was speaking to her and she was like within like the first minute she was like you need to go to grad school <laughs> <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> and so that became the that became like the journey um of like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, and also to my parents, like 
they're all about education. My dad was telling me for a while, he was like, I don't care what you get your master's and just get your master's in anything. Like, and so that was also satisfying to him just to hear that I was going to get my master's. And then he kind of came around to like being supportive with acting. <laughs> Love all that. Okay. So we're here. You're considering now taking training. Um, you're looking obviously at your master's. And what what I know about your story is, and, and what other people will learn, is that you, you ended up auditioning twice. So tell us when you were approaching auditions for the first time, like, how did you go about finding your pieces? Um, and, and did you still have that relationship with Kara or Kara? I'm not sure. I forgot how to pronounce it. But uh, how did she help you in preparing? Tell us a little bit about that. Wow. Okay. So... Oh man, like I tell you, I really did not have a background in like theater or anything. Like I was really, I was really green, like in every sense of the word. I didn't have like any artist friends. Like, so um, honestly, it was really Kara that introduced me to pieces. I remember like initially when starting to work with each other, she told me, she was like, you know, you need to find pieces and blah, blah, blah. And so I went to the drama bookshop um, on on uh, the drama book. I think. Yeah, right? is it still there? I heard they were. No. but I think Lin Manuel didn't he like buy it or something? There's some news going about that. I think at the time of of us recording this, there's there's it's either still in flux or there's some news about it. So it's okay. exciting, but yeah. Okay, so long story short, I went to the drama bookshop and I was like living in there, like just looking for um, reading plays, looking for monologues. And then I would bring them in and she would be like, no, this is just not like, it's not, it doesn't like, it just doesn't fit you. Like there's more. And it's interesting because I, so she introduced me to pieces and I, looking back on it, those pieces that she was introducing me to, they really inhabited like my gravitas as an actor, I felt like a lot of the stuff that I was like bringing in was just like really like, I don't know, it was fluffy, weird stuff. <laughs> and the stuff that the stuff that she was introducing me to, I found like they really could change the world. Like they really, they, they, um, they used all of my being, if that makes any sense. They used yeah, all course. of my body. They used my voice. They used all of the components that we need as an actor. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much how I kind of went about finding it. And she was, she was she was incredibly helpful because I also didn't know any Shakespeare pieces. I didn't know where to start with, with Shakespeare or with a classical piece. Um so she introduced me to, I think she introduced me to pretty much all of my pieces. And I kind of, I went with, I think, all of them that she introduced me to. And we just worked on it. That's great. So let's talk about working on it. Like, um, and you can you can kind of go back and forth between like that first year you auditioned and the second year audition. But the topic being like working on your pieces, like how much did you work on these? You have a job, you have to make money, you've got real world responsibilities, like how much did you work on these and, and, and what did you focus on when you worked on them? How much did I work? I found that I was working on them with her and like we would, I didn't really work on it too much by myself because <clears throat> honestly, <clears throat> I didn't really know what to work on by myself. Nice. So I, I was, so we would spend, she was just, incredibly generous and I know that some um like audition coaches for grad school they can be quite pricey if I had spent if I had paid her the amount of money that typically you would pay an audition coach I would have been like bankrupt like in the hole because <laughs> we would spend like three hours just like working on the pieces talking about them um doing, you know, cause she was trained also. So she would introduce me to some like vocal warm ups. Um, she would, she would ask me things. She would like, Oh, speak from like your gut. Like right now you're speaking in your throat, like breathe. And those were just things that I wasn't even aware of until obviously that, you know, you go to grad school and you're like, Oh, I'm not breathing here. Why am I not mm -hmm. breathing? What's going on? Um, so I would say, and then also just really personalizing, 
um, the material. If I was working on anything by myself, it was just the imagination. It was just like, okay, who am I talking to? And then if I would bring it to her and we would work on it together, it would, she would, oh, I don't really believe you. Like this is, so then I would go back and I'm like, okay, who else could I be talking to? Like trying to like create the, try to, trying to make it as personal as possible. All of the senses, who I was talking to, where, where was I? Um, yeah. Love that. Love it. Okay. So let's, let's move into the actual audition. Um, tell us the story of, of how first you, how the first year of auditions went. Tell us about the first okay. year. <laughs> All right. So I applied to NYU, Yale and UCSD the first time around. And, um, I, when I applied, I applied to NYU because my coach was like, you need to apply to NYU, but I actually wasn't going to because I was like, I don't want to pay that amount of money. Looking back on it, I you can't put a price on your training. Like you just mm -hmm. can't. Like, and I, I remember I was doing, a, this was pre-grad school and I bumped into, oh no, I think it was, po I think it was once I didn't get in and I booked like this little non-union commercial or maybe it was union. I don't remember. Um, but I was, I met a guy that actually graduated from the program. It was a print job. I should say it was a print job. And, um, and I remember he, he told me that, um, and I, that always just stuck with me. But anyway, at the time I was like, I'm not paying that amount of money. What? And she was like, well, they give full scholarships to like one or two of the 16 students and you could be one of them. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I'll apply to NYU. <laughs> Nothing to lose. And then, and I applied to Yale because I knew Yale also wasn't, um, wasn't very expensive, maybe borderline free, I think at the time. And, and then I was like, and then UCSD, I was like school on the beach and, and like <laughs> free tuition and like, what? Like, it doesn't get better than that. So UCSD was my goal. I was like, I want to go, I'm getting into UCSD. Um, so first time around, I didn't even get to end of day callback or I didn't get any type of callback with UCSD. Yale, I didn't get any type of callback with Yale. NYU, I got to final callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is I was just very confused. I was like in love. I was, I was still thinking about UCSD. I was just, I will tell you though, I was so relaxed. I had nothing to lose. And I find this to be a reoccurring theme in my life. It's like when you feel like you could just be free, you don't have the worries of like, I want this. And it's like, I got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go out there and do me. I don't care if you like me or you don't or whatever. <laughs> And people really respond. And then the minute that you're like, oh my gosh, it's happening. I could get into one of the top programs and I didn't even know what I, that's. And I think when I like going to my final callback, I get it going. Yeah. At NYU. I was so, and I, I mean, you have time you have like, I, I want to say it was like, was it three, almost two, two weeks between between first, you know, the end of day callback and then the final callback. And I had so much time. And then I was doing more research and I was like, oh my gosh, this person went here. And then, and like, oh my gosh, like this, this could be me and all of the nerves. And I never forgot the thing that really screwed me up in my final callback. And I openly, ignorantly admitted in my interview at NYU, final callbacks, they were like, so what shows and what have you seen? because the end of day callback or yeah, the, the final callbacks, you, it's like a whole day event. And so you have, there are shows, there are lunches, there's so many different activities that obviously that you should go because you want to get to know the school and da, 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 and X, Y, and Z. And I didn't go to any of it. Oh my I, didn't go to, I didn't go to any of it because not because I was like, I don't need to go to this. I didn't go to any of it because I was like in the zone and I put the zone in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like in the zone. I was like focused. I wasn't slacking. Also, I have a basketball background. Like I wanted to be in the WNBA for like a really long time before 
falling into acting. So like, I'm super like, I'm like, we're in the zone. It's game time. It's game time. I'm not <laughs> like the rest of these people that are going to be like talking and socialize. I'm in the zone. Well, let me tell you that zone. It did not help. <laughs> it was not in my favor. <laughs> Obviously now I know I was like, whoa, I was so tense. I was like a, I was like a bubble waiting to just pop. Like I was so tense. I was thinking about my monologues. I was thinking about who I was talking to. I was so, I mean, and you can imagine I was in prep and I say, I put that in quotes because obviously that's not how you prep. I was like in prep in what I thought was prep for like, what, like seven hours? It was insane. (laughs) So, so that was my first time of my first go around. Um, And then I, you know, obviously I didn't get in, (laughs) you know, um, I was like hearing from other people from that callback weekend. They were like, I got an offer and they put me on the wait list and I didn't hear anything. And then uh, eventually they were like, you know, thank you so much for applying, blah, blah, blah. Um, So that was my first time (laughs) go around. So my advice is go to the stuff like get to know the school because as much as they're interviewing you you're interviewing them like and and then also just I mean I know you're probably going to ask me later but I would just say like just be easy you've done the work you've prepared so just go and have fun it's not such high stakes I know it feels like it's like the end of the world if you don't get in but life will go on and I think you have to just treat it like that like okay we're going to do this thing. And then like, we'll see like, and it's not like, Oh my gosh, if I don't get this thing, then it's like, you're, you can't choke the dream. Just let the dream be, you know? Yes. That is so great. I love it. Okay. So let's move to when you actually did get in. Um, Let's talk about second year auditions Um, and you auditioned basically the, the the next year. So you you did a year skip. So, um, what schools did you choose that year? Did you change your pieces? Did you work with the same lady? And how did the auditions feel that time? And then like, how did you know you got in? Yeah, well, so my mindset was also like going in was, you know, and I'm not saying that this is just kind of what worked for me, I guess, was I remember speaking to my coach because she was like, you got to apply again. And I she, you know, because pe- she was like, people hardly ever get in on their first try. You know, it's like your second or your third try. That's when you get in. And I was just like, you know, I'm very spiritual. And I was like, you know, I just don't think it just may not be for me. And like, I'm just, if God moves me in that direction, then I will go. And I remember her like looking at me. She's also very spiritual. And she was like, God is in you. What are you going to just sit around like waiting for the cl- in the clouds and waiting for something to be written in the stars, go to grad school. So I was like, okay, fine. You're right. <laughs> I was like, fine, whatever. I'll just audition again. I've got nothing to lose. Here we go. So I applied. I started preparing actually a little bit later because I was so kind of I was so easy and kind of like, you know, I was just like, it is what it is. So I started, I think the first time around, I probably started preparing in August or September. This time I started preparing like November, December, like way later. Now, the thing that I had in my favor was I did have my pieces. I So all of the pieces that I used the first time, I did keep them for the second time. I just added, um, I think I added like two more or three more just in case like for NYU because I got very far with them. So they're not like she's doing the same pieces. So I did, but I kept those, I kept some of them for other schools that I was going to be applying to that didn't, I didn't get anywhere with. Um, so, Do you remember your pieces by the way? Yeah. So the first time around I did, I did in the continuum by deny Gurira. I did um, Luck of the Irish by Kirsten Greenidge. Um, and then for my Shakespeare, I did um, Queen Catherine from Henry VIII. And I think, oh, and then I had a song prepared. I had a song prepared. Um, I don't remember what, oh no, I do. I sang um, I Can't Make You Love Me by Bonnie Raitt. I sang that song and I remember I sang that for NYU and I used that song 
for my um, second time applying for UCSD. So the interesting thing, and I remember NYU really responding to the song. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll just keep it. That'll be my song um, again. And so the second time applying, I, I used um, Eclipse, um, Deny Again. I did something from The Mountaintop by Katori Hall. I did, um, for my Shakespeare, I did Adriana from Comedy of Errors and Queen Margaret from Richard III. And then the song, I kept the same. Still keeping all of the pieces I used the first time around, though. Um, so I was working with a lot of pieces, um, which was which I found was very, very helpful in my audition for UCSD because so okay, um, so yeah, so that those are the pieces. And then and then what was the question? Or am I shine well, we're on it? Like just share about like what happened in those in the second year auditions, okay, like what great. happened in the room and that made you eventually like actually get in this time. Great. So the schools that I applied to this time around, I applied, I opened it up a little bit more. So it was UCS, it was NYU again, it was Yale again, it was um, UCSD as well. I added Juilliard, I added Rutgers, and I added USD. Um, Juilliard, now my hesitancy with Juilliard was, uh, I was like, I don't want to go to school for four years. So in in a way... (laughs) So in a way, and because I was already a little bit older, I was just like, man, I got to get out there while I'm still fresh. <laughs> Even though looking back, it's like it's a year difference. One year, like one year difference really doesn't make a difference anyway. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I, is, I get it. <laughs> so, um, but with Juilliard, I didn't get, um, I didn't get a call back, but I did get reinvited into the room and I'll never forget their direction. Like, I guess they wanted to give me a direction. So, um, so their direction to me was, they were like, could you just like, like, can you listen to what the person is giving back to you? Right. And so I don't know if that makes sense as I'm saying it, or I'm not even sure if I'm repeating it verbatim as they said it, but what it was is the importance of listening. Right. So like in your, with your monologues, you want to do right. And you're going to like make your point. You're going to make them feel something. Right. Right. But it's also just as important what or how are you being affected by what you're getting back from the other person? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll never forget that because Juilliard was like my first school. And I took that note with me to my other schools. And I was like, Oh, that's very interesting. Um, That was something that actually I didn't really work on with my coach. And when I, when I told her the note, she was like, Oh, that's really great that they said that. So now, you know, like to, you know, keep that in mind for your other, for your other stuff. That's great. Um, Yeah. So just keep that in mind, um, students. Okay. So, um, so then I also, so I applied to Rutgers and I applied to USD. Um, now USD is a two-year program. This is at the time, I don't know what's changed, but it was a two-year program, mostly, mostly focusing on classical training. And so for me, I was like, no, I really want to do a lot of contemporary stuff. I don't think that, I think they actually do contemporary stuff, but this was all in my kind of like little ignorance. So at the time when I was applying USD and Rutgers, um, also a 3.5 year program. And I was like, I'm not going to school more than three years. They, in my mind, were kind of my, um, my, uh, what is that word? I wanted, I, no, they were my warm up. They were like my warm up schools. And I got to say that I am very, now granted, I think maybe the audition was like, it, the application was like, what, $50, $50 or something like that. Or maybe they waived it. I don't remember. So yeah, maybe you lose $100. But I will say, I found it to be very helpful having a warm up school because you also, to get like feedback, to get kind of in a groove, to, it's kind of like, you know, like I tell you, I'm an athlete. So it's like, I need to shoot a couple of hoops before the game, make sure that I could get the ball in the hoop. No, I still got it. You get what I'm saying? So I felt like I needed that. And I was very, I'm I'm actually very glad that I did that because those schools, they gave me confidence. I ended up getting 
um, I was on the wait list for USD and then I got called back all the, and I eventually got into Rutgers, but they gave me confidence for the schools that I really was like, Oh, here we go. Right. Here comes that, that, um, <laughs> that getting in the zone, <laughs> get in the zone. <laughs> Um, so, so I, so then I had UCSD and I had NYU and I had Yale. Yale was a, Yale didn't show me love the first time, didn't show me love the second time. (laughs) So it was really between UCSD and NYU. Now, what I didn't say the first time around was through the process of, you know, auditioning at NYU, I fell in love. I fell in love with like the architecture. I fell in love like with the people that I was meeting. I kind of was like, oh my gosh, like I thought I wanted to leave New York, but I'm like, oh no, like it's kind of like, I kind of was like, I kind of love it here. I love this place. And, um, and so for me, it was kind of, NYU was a little bit ahead of UCSD because I hadn't gone to UCSD for all I knew. I mean, I didn't get past the first callback. So um, second time around, UCSD, I get to end of day callbacks. <laughs> I do I do my first peach, was, which was in um, an accent, right? So Eclipse, um, it's in an accent. Um, and then I remember, and then I did like my Shakespeare, and then I remember them asking if I had um, another piece that didn't have the accent. Now, looking, this is fast forward to when I got into grad school, but I I remember that um, the one guy who is now at Yale, he's the one that, you know, I, I guess admitted me into the program in a, in a way. He, he, I remember him telling me, he was like, you know, just before he left, he was like, what you got to really work on is your articulation. He was like, because... You know, I'll be honest, you know, in your in your grad school audition, I didn't know what you were saying. <laughs> he was like, but he was like, but you were being affected. And so I was like, something's going on. I don't know what, but something is going on. <laughs> Love that. So, so um, I think if you are going to do something in with an accent or with a dialect, I would just say, um, do it, go for it. But I would also just say have something on the flip side as well. Something that is like, I don't want to say like very American, but just something that is like, there's no accent involved, that it's like very easily understood. I would just say to have kind of both um, to play yeah. with. Yeah, um, we recommend people, the first priority when picking a monologue is something that you respond to. It's it's more important that you love the piece and that you want to do the piece than anything else, even if yeah. it has an accent. But, yeah. you know, it's very clear and we make it very clear, like, the accent pieces are not, you know, the most conducive to college auditions. And you yeah. will find cool. <laughs> They they will ask you like you do you have anything else or do you you know typically if they like what they see they're gonna want to eventually get to something more of uh, course for sure and I will say I that is definitely true because you know even in my first time around with NYU I did in the continuum and I led with that and that's a sex worker and she has an accent. Um, and I, I think she's from Zimbabwe. Yeah, she's Zimbabwean. So she had an accent and then they asked to see something else. So mm. then I had Luck of the Irish, which is a character who she's very prim and proper. And she's, you know, are very, very articulate. And she, you know, all of like, so so I had that flip side. Um, so I think that if you want to do an act, have anything with an accent, go for it. Like s- totally support it. And if they are interested and you do like your job, they will ask for something else. So it, it won't backfire on you as long as you're fully committed to, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. So let's talk about when you got in, like, how did you know that you got, did you get a call? Like what was the moment there? Okay, so here's the deal. So when I was at UCSD at my final callback, I had gotten an email from NYU that I was on the wait list. And then when I like got back to New York, and I think I found out pretty quick, I think it was within like a couple of days that I was, you know, that I got into UCSD. Was it? 
a call or was it an email? I think it was a call. I actually don't even remember. No, <laughs> it, might, it might have been a call and then an email. I don't yeah, remember. Probably. But We're I will say call. that my final, my callback, like my final callback at UCSD, all, everybody was on, everybody was there. All the faculty. I think there were like six or seven people in the room. Um, they were all there and they were so welcoming. And I remember when I sang my song, they asked me to do like all of my pieces. So I think I did like five pieces for them. Um, and then, and then I was like, who? And they were like, wow, that was great. And then, and then before leaving the room, cause I love to sing. I really do. And before leaving the room, I was like, can I sing? <laughs> and they were like, oh, you want to sing? I was like, yeah. And so I sang my song and they all clapped. <laughs> they all <laughs> clapped for me. And I was like, wow, this felt like home. And so for me, UCSD, it was just like, this was home. And the final callback is just a beautiful experience. You go to like the bluffs and they bring tacos and, you know, it's just like a party and it's just so chill and it's just, it's gorgeous. Um, sorry, I, I, I strayed away. What was the question again? No, that was it. Yeah. I kind of wanted to hear about that final callback and, and how it went and how you got accepted. But I, and that's Oh great. yeah. And that was, and that was it. And then I knew I was like, also with NYU, even though I didn't wait to see if I was going to get on the, off the wait list or anything, I was like, this is it. UCSD is it. I, I have, but you know, the, it was, it's funny because I was listening, like I told you, Anthony, to your, a previous podcast. And, um, you know, when you kind of get admitted into two schools at the same time, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like some, at some point during your training, you're like, did I make the wrong choice? <laughs> so NYU to me was always like the school that I'm like, what are they doing over there? <laughs> you know, but, um, but no, I know that I, um, that I made the, the right choice. I love that is you. awesome. I mean, yeah. you have given us so much uh, just gold. We, you know, I want to let you uh, wrap up with some final thoughts. But I mean, if if you've been if you're a listener and you've been listening to this the whole thing, you you you've pretty much got all the the tips and the advice. But I do want to give you an opportunity, Fiki, to just lay out some final words of wisdom. I mean, we're talking to people here who don't know where they're going to go next year. They may be applying for these top programs and they're about to go in. They, they may have uh, no background like you where they're just yeah. kind of figuring it out, or maybe they have some training at high school or, or in professional, but regardless, like what is something that you want to leave with them as they prepare mm. to go into auditions? I want to leave. I would say, and and I say this because I'm like, this is what I would have told my younger self, my pre-grad school self, my auditioning self. And sometimes that's what I actually need to tell myself now. <laughs> but is like, do, do like, you know, the Olympics, right? Train, train, train. And, and then let it go. And what I mean is that like, prepare, like, if you're going to work with the coach, if you're not going to, I would recommend working with the coach and finding somebody that you, you trust, that you admire their work. Um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily say going the traditional route of going to the, um, you want to get into grad school, you come here and we pick these monologues. I would say if you could find like a friend of some, that somebody that did go to grad school and you really like their work and I would say go the untraditional I would recommend going the untraditional path because that's what worked for me. Um, but I would say work really hard. And then when you get in that room, just play, play, have fun. That's the reason that you want to be an actor or in some of, for some of you, you are an actor because you enjoy it. It's fun. You get to use your imagination. You get to be like crazy and out of the box. You get to, you get to express something. So I would say, yes, there is, there is the like, okay, you're going to the gym and you gotta like, you gotta put, you gotta train and you gotta be tedious. And like, it may feel that way. But then when you get in that building, wherever you're going to be auditioning, just let it all go. Let it go. Have fun. Um, 
and leave a piece of you feel feel like that by the end of it you're like oh i left a piece of me with them i shared a part of me and that's how it should feel um so i guess yeah Beautiful. that's 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 my that's my advice i hope that's helpful it is um, very helpful i i love it i love the encouragement and i think that your story is absolutely great i'm so glad we got to learn from you today yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for asking me. Yes, I'm so glad I could be of any help. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. People will be able to uh, listen to this and uh, I think enjoy it. So Great. for everyone listening, we hope you have enjoyed this. We hope you have an awesome day. T take notes. Tell your friends and get into drama school. And that's yeah. it. We're have a good one. All right. Bye.